Lazarus. Hurry up, you two. Martha, the Jerusalem marketplace has been here for centuries. It's not going to disappear in the next ten minutes. We will not get the best selection if we're not early. It's dawn. Trust me, we're early. Oh, Martha, I just love Jerusalem. The city of our ancestors. And the best shopping in the entire world. To the sounds of the city as the sun begins to rise in the sky. You can hear all the vendors selling the splendors as all of the world passes by. Everyone that you meet, that you pass on the street, no part of this loud, noisy throng. Though different they seem, they share one common theme. They're all Spotless, perfect lamb. But remember, I'll brush him every day and give him a great name. No, son, you cannot name him. He's not a pet. He's our Passover lamb. Do you remember what that means? I remember, Father, when the Hebrews were slaves in Egypt, God sent Moses to ask Pharaoh to let them go. But even after all the plagues, he would not. So God sent Moses to tell every Hebrew family to kill a spotless lamb put its blood on their doorposts. That's right. And why did God tell them to do this? Because at midnight, God himself passed over the land. And in every home not covered by the blood of a lamb? The firstborn died. That would be me, wouldn't it? Yes, it would, son. The lamb became their substitute. It died so that they could live. God told us to do this every year to remember his deliverance. That's why we've come to Jerusalem. To remember that no matter what, God always keeps His promises. But the city's much more than a marketplace. It's the land of the promise, the hope of our 
faith, but our song would be a vain and empty thing without our God who causes us to sing. rescued by my little brother, though. Well, don't worry. I'll, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Do you remember when you were small and afraid of the dark? Sure. I still am. Remember what I told you? Yes. If I listened closely, I would, I would hear God's voice. You do remember. But I never did, Mary. Never did what? Hear God's voice. Not once. Just keep listening, little brother. You will. What do you think his voice sounds like, Mary? Oh, like music. Like a beautiful song. Song? We have no time for songs. No bread and no birds, no supper. Lazarus was just... Daydreaming again, right? Look, I'll take care of these things. Just promise me that you'll help when we get home. I want this dinner to be special. Martha, the dinner is going to be special. But not because of the pretty table or the great food. Jesus is going to be there. That's what makes it special. Exactly. That's why I want it to be perfect. I'd better go help. Benjamin? Benjamin! Lazarus? <laughs> My old friend! <laughs> it's been years! You've come a long way from the guy I used to run the streets with. And you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> so tell me about yourself. I am a teacher of the law now. For me, the law is truth. It's my life. And I must be doing well at it. Because three weeks ago, I was made an aide to the high priest himself. You an aide to Caiaphas? <laughs> you have come up in the world. And if my plans work out, I may even be high priest myself one day. But what about you? What are you doing here in Jerusalem? I'm here with Mary and Martha. We're having supper with Jesus of Nazareth tonight. Shh, quiet. <laughs> Don't let anyone hear you say that name. What are you doing with Jesus? He's my friend. He's been to our home many times. He may be your friend, but he's the most hated man in Jerusalem. He stirs up the people. He flaunts our law. He blasphemes. Have you met him? Listened to him? You believe him, don't you? You, my oldest friend, believe the no-name son of a no-name carpenter is the promised Messiah? Sent from God to what? Conquer Rome? Set up an earthly kingdom? <laughs> Listen, Benjamin, the first time I met Jesus, 
I heard John the Baptist tell anybody who would listen about a light that was to come. And when I saw Jesus step out of the crowd that day, I knew the light that he spoke of was much more than just an earthly kingdom. Listen. I am one voice crying in the wilderness, shouting at the emptiness of the world, singing one song of hope to those who've gone astray. Now prepare ye the way of the Lord. I speak one truth, salvation for the weary soul. Repent and you will be made whole once again. Light will overcome the dark, a flame that pierces deep in the hearts of all men. No, I am not the Christ. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. There stands one among you whom you do not know. And I tell you this, I am not worthy to unlace his sandals. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Beats the tyranny of the world. There will be one who'll carry all our sins away. The Son of God prepares. I have come to be baptized by you, John. But why do you come to me? I should be baptized by you. For now, this is how it should be, in obedience to the Father. This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. just the beginning. There's so much more I could tell you. Why don't you come eat with us tonight? You are putting yourself in grave danger by following Jesus. Listen to me. You were always like a brother to me. 
Benjamin, I, I now have a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I suppose it's your life then, isn't it? Lazarus? Don't forget what I said. Lazarus, is everything all right? Sure. Who are you talking to? Well, that was, uh, just somebody I used to know. All right, I think we have everything. Oh, I hope I didn't forget anything. I want this dinner to be... Perfect. perfect. Exactly. Stop that man! He stole my money bag! Does this belong to you? It does. That's a month's wages right there, too. Why don't you work for your money like honest people? Yeah. Wait a minute. This man looks familiar. <laughs> well, well, well. Look who we've just caught. This is Barabbas, the most wanted man in the Roman Empire. Guilty of robbery, causing riots, and murder. We'll get a nice big bonus for bringing you in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this slime to jail. We've got more important things to do. And the rest of you, get back to your business, unless you want to join him. See here now, no need to push us around. We're no better off today than our ancestors were in Egypt. Slaves we are. <laughs> no, we must never forget God's word. He promised to send the Messiah to deliver us. So where is he? Maybe he forgot about us. And maybe you know nothing about our God. He kept all his promises to Abraham and Moses. He brought us out of Egypt and into the Promised Land. He gave us Jerusalem, the holy city, our homeland, where we can celebrate His goodness to us with lights and music. And where we, look in, where we can look forward to the day where the Lord Himself will stand in the midst of His people and rejoice over them with singing.
the rolls are burning, the lamb is tough, the figs are mushy, and where is my help? What is the matter? Lazarus, look at this mess. Jesus is here with his 12 disciples in our home for a meal, and I have no help. Have you seen Mary? She's out on the porch with the others. When she should be in here helping me. She's done everything that you've asked. Do I have to ask for everything? Martha, everyone is having a wonderful time except you. Don't you think Jesus would rather you spend time with him instead of doing for him? I should have known you wouldn't understand. Suppose you go to a friend's house at midnight to borrow three loaves of bread. Your friend calls out, The doors are locked for the night. Do not bother us. I tell you this, if you keep knocking long enough, he will rise up and give you what you ask just to receive some quiet. <laughs> Martha, what's troubling you? Doesn't it seem unfair to you that I do all the work while Mary just sits here? Martha, why are you so concerned about all these things? There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has found it, and I will not take it away from her. Teacher, <laughs> tell us what the story means. If you keep asking, you will receive. If you keep looking, you will find. And if you keep knocking, the door will always open. Ah, there's nothing like Jerusalem during festival time. You'd better enjoy it. Why, you can then. Why? Haven't you heard? Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. Any day now, he's going to ride in on a white horse. Destroy the Roman army with a single hand. And set up a kingdom. Right. And I think you two had some bad food at the feast last night. Maybe we've exaggerated a little, but I'm telling you, this Jesus, he's dangerous. His influence has multiplied 100 times in just over two years. With whom, gentlemen? <laughs> His followers. Have you gotten a good look at them? Tramps, outcasts, the poor. They're attracted to anyone who'll make a pretty promise. Well, I still think we've made a mistake allowing this carpenter to get as far as he has. Gentlemen. Why, I smell fear. <laughs> Jesus is just another in a long line of self-appointed messiahs. The people follow him because he spins a good yarn. Sir, I think the danger may lie in underestimating Jesus. What kind of danger, Nicodemus? Spiritual or political? Well, possibly both, sir. He heals on the Sabbath. He blasphemes. He claims his father is God. That's old news. It doesn't concern me. Benjamin, you've only been with us a short while, but uh, what are your thoughts? Sir, our connections with the Roman Empire have made us strong enough to withstand anything a carpenter could offer. You show great promise. With one exception, his fame continues to grow. If he should start a riot and we don't or can't stop him, huh. the Romans will step in. And we'll be out of a job. Joseph of Arimathea, I've had him watching Jesus for quite some time now. Tell us about him, starting with these miracles. I need a good story. The first miracle Jesus did was at a wedding three years ago. Oh, that's a good choice. A lot of people around to uh, watch him perform. It wasn't like that at all, sir. Only a few servants saw what he did. It was in Cana. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, Blessed art thou, o Lord, our God creator of the universe. Gladden their hearts. Gladden their hearts. Make them one. Make them one. Give them all, give them all joy. 
joy. Mother. Oh, it's so good to see you. Do you know, I've just learned that they are out of wine. <laughs> Dear woman, why do you involve me? My time has not yet come. Servant, whatever my son says to do, you do it. Servants, fill the jars with water. Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Yes. Hmm. This is excellent. Where did this come from? Ah, my son. The best wine is always served first, but you, my son, <laughs> yes, you have saved the best for last. Let's continue the celebration! <laughs>
And that was just the beginning. Everywhere Jesus went, people sought him out with their needs. There were entire days Jesus went from one person to another, healing minds and bodies again and again.
even with so many people clamoring for his attention. Jesus treated everyone as if he knew them personally. He could immediately go to the source of their need, as if he, as if he felt their pain. Gentlemen, if I didn't know better, I'd think you two were becoming a bit partial. I need an unbiased opinion, so several days ago I sent Benjamin to the town of Bethany to check out a report that one of Jesus' closest friends was extremely sick, unto death. <laughs> I can't wait to see what he'll do when the pain becomes personal. Lord, my brother Lazarus is dead. If you had been here, he would not have died. But even now I know God will give you anything you ask. <laughs> Martha, Martha, your brother will rise again. Yes, on Resurrection Day when all believers rise. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Do you believe this? I believe you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God come into the world. If you'd been here, my brother would still be alive. Show me where you've put him. Come and see. Oh, see how much he loved Lazarus. He healed a blind man. Why couldn't he keep Lazarus from dying? Take away the stone. No, Lord, he's been dead four days. By now the stench would be unbearable. Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Father, thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me, but for their sakes I pray out loud so that they may believe that you have sent me. Lazarus, come forth! Falls to the dead! Look! Loose him and let him go! Lazarus! Lazarus! Oh, oh, oh. Lazarus! You're alive! Oh, oh. This newest report is a bit disturbing. Jesus calling a man out of a tomb who'd been dead four days. I was there, sir. So here we are. The people speak of nothing but Jesus. <laughs> Every day, more and more of them are coming to the temple asking about I him. Get the picture. The problem is growing, sir. And now even the Romans are getting nervous. Hmm. What are we going to do? They're going to take away our nation. Enough already! Do you think I'm stupid? I realize it's better that one man die for the people than for the entire nation to perish. Benjamin, issue an announcement that anyone who sees this Jesus must report to us immediately. And that goes for the man he supposedly raised from the dead. What uh, is your plan, sir? First, we arrest them and get them out of circulation, and then we figure out a way to uh, get rid of them without causing a riot. How are we going to do that? Sir, what often kills the strongest oak tree are not the blows from without, but the rot from within? <laughs> I like your thinking. See to it. And the rest of you, get down there and pretend you're useful. My friends, Passover begins in two days. Then, the Son of Man will be betrayed and crucified.
There's a place within the temple behind the veil where the glory of God resides, and no one but the high priest can ever enter in one time a year and fully purified. She had sold it and given the money to the poor. Judas, leave her alone. She is doing this to prepare for my burial. You will have the poor with you always, but I will not be with you much longer. She has done what she could. And I tell you truly, wherever the gospel is told throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Was a needless extravagance and utter waste An expensive empty gesture from a foolish heart And yet my words of wisdom Were ridiculed and mocked As if there were some hidden truth in which I
It's Lazarus. Wait. Stay back. Temple officer. Move back now. What are you doing here? We're here celebrating Passover. Are you insane? If the temple priests find you, they will have you killed. Benjamin, I've been dead once. I don't fear them. You really are insane. I was there, you know. I saw you come out of that tomb. Now do you believe? I believe Jesus is a con man or a magician, but he is not the Messiah. Well, then I feel sorry for you. Benjamin, you're more dead standing here than I was in that grave. Wait. What was it like? What did you see? Oh, Benjamin, I saw life. Oh, it was in me. It surrounded me. The lights, the joy, and the music, so beautiful, it would break your heart. And when I go back, oh, it will never end. Benjamin, who was that man? Was that Lazarus? No. I thought it was at first, but that man is much different. Have you ever seen so many people come to Jerusalem for Passover? And Pilate's getting jumpy. He's doubled the guard and lectured Caiaphas about crowd control. We must find Jesus quickly. I have a bad feeling about this.
Shalom! Isn't it a glorious morning, gentlemen? <laughs> Sir, maybe you haven't been keeping up with current events lately, but Jesus is now King of the Jews by popular vote. Have you ever noticed how quickly the tide of public opinion can turn? King today, convicted criminal tomorrow. <laughs> What are you talking about? While the rest of you were out wringing your hands, my aide was busy making a new best friend. Gentlemen, this is Judas Iscariot, a former disciple of Jesus. He has agreed to help us with our little problem. For a price. Of course. I know where he's staying, and I know where he's going later alone. And you will take us to him. For a price. Why should we trust you? After all, you're one of his disciples. I was never really one of them. I pretended to believe in his foolish kingdom for reasons of my own. But now, now the only thing I believe is that I can take you to him. For a price. Name it. This will involve a little planning. He's going to have the Passover meal with his disciples. I have to be there or he'll suspect something. But after the meal, <laughs> I think it just might work. Your price! Betrayer. For you? A bargain, O oh high priest. Thirty pieces of silver. <laughs> <laughs> the price of a slave. <laughs> Done. <laughs> anyone who loves his life will lose it. But anyone who gives up his life for my sake will have eternal life. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. No one takes it away from me. Because you see, I give it up willingly. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a substitute for many. The time has come. Peter, James, John, we must go. Come on, son, it's getting late. Let's put the lamb back in its pen. But tomorrow, he's going to die. Can I just stay with him just for a few minutes, Abba? Just one last time. But tomorrow is Passover, Caleb. The lamb is our substitute. His blood covers our sins. He must die in our place. I know Abba, but he's my friend. I love him. I know, son. Just a few more minutes, okay? Please try to understand. You're very special. We need you. I know. time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. 
Just as my Father has given me a kingdom, I now give you the right to eat and drink at my table in that kingdom. What a fool I've been How can I be taken in By this talk of a kingdom That would never end I believed his words And the promises I heard But no more Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In remembrance of you, Lord, in remembrance of you, we'll never forget this sweet friendship we knew. We will eat of this bread and drink from this cup in remembrance to Take, drink all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. In remembrance of you, Lord, in remembrance of you, we'll never forget this sweet friendship we knew. We will be Judas, what you're about to do, do quickly. I will only be with you a little longer. You will come and look for me, but you will not find me. So now I give you a new commandment. Love one another, just as I have loved you. This way people will know that you are my disciples. But where are you going, Lord? <laughs> where I'm going? You cannot follow now. But you will follow later. But... Why can't I go with you? I would die for you. Would you, Peter? Would you die for me? I tell you truly, before the rooster crows, you will deny that you even know me three times. No, never, Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. I am going to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Lord! We don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Thomas, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I have said these things to you that you may have peace in me. In this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. The hour has come. Peter, Stop. 
please. Keep watch while I pray. Peter, James, John. My soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. Pray lest you fall into temptation. Please, keep watch. pass for me if there's any other way if there's any other way please let this cup pass for me Not in everything, Father. Not my will, but thy will be done. not watch and pray for one hour enough the time has come the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners rise up here is my betrayer Betray the Son of Man with a kiss. <laughs> Who is it that you're looking for? I am Malchus, servant to Caiaphas. Are you Jesus of Nazareth? I am. If you're looking for me, let these men go. No! Peter! Oh, Peter, no. ah! Ah! My ear! Ah! Ah! sword back in its place. If all who live by the sword, die by the sword. Do you not think I could call on my father? And he would have once sent twelve legions of angels. But if I were to do that, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But now you come with swords and clubs to Arrest me like a criminal? What the scriptures say must come to pass. Arrest him! Arrest them all! <laughs> what 
What wrong has this man done? Are there any witnesses? What are the charges brought against this man? He said he would destroy this temple made with hands. And in three days, he would build another. Do you have an answer? Are you the Christ? I am. Oh. Ah! Blasphemy! Blasphemy! No more witnesses! What is to be done with this man? Die. Who has hit you? Prophesy. Enough. If you want him dead, take him to Pilate for sentencing. I, I don't know what you're talking about. That's the man that was with Jesus of Nazareth. I do not know that man. Wait, you're one of Jesus' followers. I'm sure of it. Your accent gives you away. You don't know what you're talking about. You're all crazy. I do not know that man. I don't know him. Of what do you accuse this man? He claims to be the Christ, and he spreads this lie from here to Galilee. The prisoner is from Galilee? He is most noble Pilate. Galilee is not my jurisdiction. Let Herod decide his fate. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we meet the famous miracle man from Nazareth. <laughs> Although, you are not much to look at now, are you? But then, who needs looks when you have talent? <laughs> and Jesus, I understand that you have extraordinary talent. <laughs> you must do something to entertain us. Gather around, everyone. Jesus is about to perform a trick. I know. Let's see. Why don't you take this rope and turn it into a snake like Moses? <laughs> or maybe you would like to take this bread and feed the multitudes. <laughs> oh. Well, then why don't you just walk on water? <laughs> Heal the sick. Raise the dead. something to entertain us. Call down the angels and free yourself. Just as I expected. Suppose there won't be any miracles today. Just as well. Okay, Caiaphas, I give up. Why are you bothering me with, with this? Pilate has sent him here for a ruling. Jesus is accused of inciting the people to riot, refusing to pay tribute to Caesar, and claiming to be the Messiah, the King of the Jews. Huh? A king, you say? Well, what a coincidence! Here's the king! There's the king! There's even the kings everywhere! Would any of you out here like to be king for today? And we have so much in common. Well, if you're really a king, then where is your robe, huh? Well, I know here. Why don't you just take mine? Now there's a robe fit for a king. <laughs> Help Jesus. Help King of the Jews. Help the Messiah. Silence. 
look at you stern in the eye. You're pathetic. Do you realize that I hold your life in the palm of my hand? You remind me so much of, my, of your cousin John the Baptist. Might I remind you that I cut his head off and I summed it on a platter? You haven't got the sense to beg for your life. No, do not cut off his head. If he is to die, it will have to be at the hands of Pilate. Guards, send him back to Pilate and tell him, this is what Herod thinks of his king of the Jews. And D, he's king of the fools. Oh yes, and Jesus, when you see your cousin again, John the Baptist, be sure to tell him that I said, hello. <laughs> this man back to me I have found no fault in him the people demand his death what is your response to them punish him yourself we would most noble pilots but it's against your laws for us to put a man to death are you the king of the Jews <sighs> You have rightly said that I am a king. Still I find no fault in him! Pilate, I must speak with you. I am your wife and I know it is not my place to interfere in your judgments, but this time I have to. I've had a terrible dream, and I believe it's a warning. Please do not punish Jesus, I beg of you. He is a righteous man. But have you seen this crowd? They leave me no choice. Isn't it your custom to release a prisoner to them during their feast? Yes, but what... Have the guards go to the jail and bring out the vilest, most disgusting piece of filth they can find and then offer the people their choice. Him or Jesus. Of course. Given that choice, they will surely choose Jesus over a condemned murderer. It's brilliant, my dear. Centurion, bring Barabbas up from the jail. People of Judea, I have made every effort over the years to work together with you for peace. As you know, it is my custom each year to release one prisoner to you. This year, I offer you a choice. Barabbas, guilty of robbery, insurrection, even murder, or this Jesus, in whom I find no fault. Now, who would you have me release unto you? Give us Barabbas! Centurion, prepare papers for the release of Barabbas. <laughs> and as for him, the blood of this man is your responsibility. Away with him! Let him be crucified! <laughs> Attracted into him, yet he took a bar and burned my teeth. Oh, the sorrow and the suffering. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with our grief. A man despised and rejected, surely we esteemed him not. Nothing to make us desire him, beauty nor majesty. Not one attracted to him, yet he took
Oh, Lazarus, look what's become of your king. And look what's become of your law. You and I both know those trials were a mockery, the charges false, and the witnesses false, and none of it was done according to law. Look at it, Benjamin. He's hanging there in my place and in yours. And no matter where you go or who you are, You'll never know a greater love than this.
today, you will be with me in paradise. Centurion, the high priests have been to see Pilate. They say if the crucified remain after sundown, all of Golgotha will be defiled. Then make sure he's dead. Joseph, Nicodemus, why do you come to me at this hour of the day? Pilate, sir, I would like to request that the body of Jesus be released to me for burial in my tomb. You, a member of the great Sanhedrin, you are a follower of Jesus Christ. I have kept it secret until now because I feared them. You realize, of course, that if I release his body to you, it will no longer be a secret. Sir, we are prepared to accept the consequences. Very well. Centurion, when Jesus is dead, release his body to this man. Jesus is already dead.
Joseph. Why have guards been posted here? The chief priest went to Pilate and reported that before his death, Jesus predicted he would rise in three days. They fear the disciples will steal his body and then tell people he has risen. Nicodemus, do you think it's over? Jesus told me something a long time ago that I'll never forget. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whoever believed in him would not die but would have everlasting life. So no, I don't think it's over. I think it's just begun. body is missing. The disciples are hiding in fear. And now, Pilate and Caiaphas accusing each other. And now all these stories about the women from the tomb, it's too amazing to be real. You two seem to be in deep discussion about something. What are you so concerned about? <laughs> Why, you must be the only one in all of Jerusalem that does not know about the things that have happened. <laughs> what things? The things that happened to Jesus in Nazareth. Jesus was a prophet of God who worked mighty, mighty miracles. 
a great teacher before God and the people. We believed that he was the Messiah, the one who had come to redeem Israel. But just before Passover, the priests and the rulers arrested him. They condemned him and he was crucified. All of that was three days ago. But this morning, some of the women from our group of followers went to his tomb. They came back saying the tomb was empty and the body was gone. They, they said that there were angels there. Angels. And the angels said that Jesus is alive. That's right. Some of the men ran out to sea, and sure enough, his body is missing. <laughs> you foolish people. Why do you find it so hard to believe what the prophets wrote in Scripture? They clearly predicted that the Messiah must suffer before he entered into his glory. The Lord spoke to Isaiah the prophet saying, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. The father also said that he would be despised and rejected by men, bruised and wounded for their sins. But in the end, he would be called wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the Prince of Peace. And his kingdom would never end. Would you like to hear more? We want to hear everything. <laughs> Lazarus, Lazarus, have you heard? Jesus, he's risen. We've seen him. We walked with him to Emmaus, but we didn't recognize him until we sat down to eat and he disappeared. Many of us have seen him, the risen Christ. He asked us to meet him here today, up on the hillside. Lazarus, Lazarus, I need to talk to you, please. Go ahead, I'll catch up. I resigned my position with Caiaphas. You were right, Lazarus. When I saw Jesus on that cross, I knew that everything I had trusted in was a lie. These people are changed because of Jesus. You are changed because of him. I want that too. And I know Jesus is the way. Benjamin, Jesus is the only way. Come on.
in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. And surely I will be with you always, even until the very end of the age. Thank God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, literally, actually, bodily, walked out of that grave. Now, here is the question. Jesus lives. Do you? Have you received the life that Jesus Christ came to give? He says in His Word, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. You receive that new life by receiving Jesus Christ, the Son of God, into your heart. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. To be saved means that every sin is forgiven, that Christ now lives in our heart to give us peace and power and purpose, and that one day we will spend eternity with him. Would you like to be saved? Why don't you pray this prayer right now from your heart? Dear God, pray it right now. Dear God, I know that you love me. I know that you want to save me. You died to save me, Jesus, and you promised to save me if I would trust you. I do trust you. Right now, this moment, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sin and save me. Friend, pray that and mean it, and I promise you on the authority of the Word of God, He will do just that and you will have the life that Jesus came to give you, that he died to give you, that he rose to give you, and that he promised to give you. this letter to you. I was on the island of Patmos, exiled for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was worshiping on the Lord's day when I heard a loud voice like a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. When I turned to see who was speaking, I saw one who looked like Jesus. I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid a hand on me and he said, Don't be afraid. Write down what you see and I will show you what must happen in the future. Then I saw a vast crowd from all nations and languages clothed in white. These are the ones who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. 
they stand before the throne of God and worship day and night shouting, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, blessing and glory and wisdom and honor and power and praise be to our God forever and ever. Then I saw the heaven open, and there was a man who had eyes like flames of fire, wearing crowns. He comes to judge in righteousness, and all the armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, clean and white, followed him to make war. He wore a robe covered with blood, and he was called the Word of God. On the part of his robe that covered his thigh was written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords.
since the beginning of time, God has revealed Christ, the living word in the Holy Scriptures. In Genesis, Jesus is the ram at Abraham's altar. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is our high priest. In Numbers, he is the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is our city of refuge. In Joshua, he is a scarlet thread out Rahab's window. In Judges, he is our judge. In Ruth, he is our kinsman redeemer. In 1st and 2nd Samuel, he's our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra, he is the restorer of worship. In Nehemiah, he is the rebuilder of brokenness. In Esther, he is our God of providence. In Job, he is our redeemer who ever lives. In Psalms, he is my shepherd and I shall not want. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he's our wisdom. And in the Song of Solomon, he's our chiefest of 10,000. In Isaiah, he's a man of sorrows. In Jeremiah and Lamentation, he's the righteous judge. In Ezekiel, he's the Lord who is always there. And in Daniel, he is the smiting stone. In Hosea, he is the God of redeeming love. And in Joel, he is the hope of his people. In Amos, he is the righteous one. In Obadiah, he's the executor of justice. In Jonah, he is the one sent into the world by the Father. In Micah, he is the God of my salvation. In Nahum, he is the stronghold in the day of trouble. In Habakkuk, he is the restorer of faith. In Zephaniah, he is the Lord mighty to save. In Haggai, he's the desire of all nations. In Zechariah, he's our wall of fire. And in Malachi, he's the refiner and purifier of all who come to him. In Matthew, he is Jesus Christ our King. In Mark, he is the servant of the Lord. In Luke, he is the Son of Man who comes to seek and to save that which is lost. And in John, he is the Son of God, the Great I Am. In Acts, he is our ascended Lord. In Romans, he is our justification. In 1 Corinthians, he is the resurrected Christ. In 2 Corinthians, he is our treasure in earthen vessels. In Galatians, he is the bearer of our sin. In Ephesians, he is our chief cornerstone. In Philippians, He is the exalted one. In Colossians, He is the image of the invisible God. In 1 Thessalonians, He is our soon coming Lord. And in 2 Thessalonians, He is the God of recompense. In 1 Timothy, He is the mediator between God and man. In 2 Timothy, He is the promise of life. In Titus, He is the God of mercy. In Philemon, He is the God who intercedes. And in Hebrews, he is our ever-living intercessor. In James, he is the giver of grace. In 1st and 2nd Peter, he is our chief shepherd. In 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, he is our advocate with the Father. In Jude, he is our only wise God, our Savior. And in Revelation, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning. 